Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again this is Jeremy Smith. I am off camera today guys, uh, so you get to tolerate hand model Jeremy today. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Aaron recently wrote me and asked me a question about his brand new 70-200 2.8 lens. He said, Jeremy, what on earth does this switch right here do on my lens? Well Aaron, this switch is a focus limiter. What on earth, you ask, is a focus limiter? Well. Stay tuned, and we'll go into this in a little bit more detail. Before I jump right into this, I'll go ahead and thank everyone for all their uh, comments and all the feedback and questions. A lot of you guys' questions actually end up being the topic of future videos. So just like Aaron that had this question, uh, definitely, you know, write me if you have questions and your question could end up in a video. Be sure, obviously, to subscribe so you see all the latest updates. Okay, so about this switch in question. As I mentioned, this is a focus limiter. Now, a focus limiter is basically a device uh, that's going to limit a lens's focus range. So, this is common on telephoto lenses especially. So if you look at something like this 70 to 200 2.8 GM, this lens is capable of focusing as close as about 0.96 meters, which is about 3.15 feet. So this is something I love about this lens a lot. Um, when doing portrait work, I can get very, very close and really make my subject feel the frame. But sometimes you might be focusing on something that's just far away. So let's say that you're on the sidelines of a sporting event or you're doing some type of wildlife or something. You know, you don't want the lens to focus on like people on the sidelines of the game. You want them, the lens to focus on the action out on the, out on the field or out on the court. Um, if you're photographing birds or something, you wouldn't want the lens to focus on something uh, closer up, like maybe some other branches or something. You want it to focus on that bird that's farther than the distance. That's where the focus limiter comes into play. So if we wanted to lock out this lens's close-up focus range, we could take it over to the uh, limit setting. Now, as you guys can see, if it's on full, it can focus on something very, very close, and it can focus on something very, very far. Um, in my little example, my subject was approximately, um, approximately four feet away or so. But uh, as soon as I went over and went to the limit setting, the limit setting will not allow the lens to focus on anything that's closer than three meters. So basically you end up with this minimum focus distance of about 9.84 feet and uh, you can only focus on things far away. So that's kind of your different settings on a 70 to 200 2 GM. And it's pretty much the same story on other 70 to 200 lenses on the market. Um, I think all the current ones work the same way. The Sigma, the Nikon, the Tamron, the Canon, etc., etc. Another type of lens that you might see a focus limiter switch on would be a macro lens. So as an example, I have Sony's 90 millimeter uh, macro here. Now, on most macro lenses, you will actually have more than one focus limit setting. As you can see, this lens has a full setting, then it has a setting that says uh, infinity, just uses the infinity, infinity symbol here. So infinity to 0.5 meters, and then it has another setting that says 0.5 meters to 0.28 meters. So as you guys can see, this thing has a ridiculous range. Um, I can focus on something extremely close up, and I can go to something very, very far away, kind of all in one go. Uh, this lens focuses down to like 28 centimeters, which is like 11.02 uh, feet. So you can focus very, very, very close or very far. Now, this focal length is also very, very good for photographing uh, like, you know, portraits as well. I sometimes use this lens as a portrait lens in the studio. But in scenarios like that, you know, the focus throw is very long. The throw is basically the distance from like the closest up to the furthest away. So that focus throw is very, very long. So if you're using this lens at normal distance and you're not needing that macro range, it's gonna be better to go ahead and put it over to something like this middle position right here. So in the middle position, it's not gonna do the very, very close uh, 0.28 meters. It's only gonna go down to 0.5 meters and then go all the way out to the long end, which is infinity. So that's where that comes in. If you were using this lens just to shoot macro images and you weren't concerned about the infinity uh, distance, you know, the faraway distance, and you weren't really concerned about the in-between, 
you were just working close up only, that's where the third position would come in. And that third position allows you to just stay locked within that macro range and it won't focus outside of it. And on a lens like this, since that focus throw is so long, limiting it to a certain part of the range is gonna be very, very good. So if you're doing close-ups, flowers, insects, things like that, leave it on this position. If you're doing portraits, in most cases, you leave it on that position um, or anything else at normal distance. And then if you wanna do a little bit of both, you could put it over to full. That's how that works out. Now, one extra piece of bonus information that you need to know about lenses. People will see that they have a minimum focus distance. And so they think, oh man, that must be from the end of the lens all the way to the subject. But actually, the minimum focus distance is from the center inside the camera to the subject. So how do you know where the center inside the camera is, you ask? Well, that's a simple thing. If you look on any camera that has interchangeable lenses, there's going to be a symbol that looks like this. And this right here is where the sensor is in your camera. This is where your focal plane is. So when you're thinking about the minimum focus distance of a lens, always, always, always remember that that minimum focus distance is from this point to your subject, not from the front of the lens to the subject. Anyways, guys, that about does it for this one. Uh, again, thanks to Aaron for the great question. If you have any questions, write them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. I love getting these opportunities to make even more videos to answer your questions. And um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to follow me on social media. I am known as Photog J the Great. Until next time, this is Jeremy Smith, signing off.